Welcome to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, where it's all about helping your veterinary practice attract, engage, and retain clients. Broadcasting a new podcast every Monday from sunny Southern California, here's your host, Brandon Bashirs. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 187 of the Veterinary Marketing Podcast. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We are almost into 2020, just a couple days away here. And that's why I am doing this episode, which is five things that I think are going to be very important for your marketing in 2020 and beyond. I think this is going to have some real impact uh, even beyond this. These are kind of things that I think are just going to be a very big deal, especially into the next decade. It's hard to look forward and know what's going to happen, but Definitely in 2020, um, and then likely for several more years beyond this, it's going to be very, very helpful. So it's going to be a great episode. If you have any questions, any comments, you need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. The best place to do that right now is heading on over to the Facebook group, The Veterinary Marketing Nerds. If you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash The Veterinary Marketing Nerds, you can join there for free, get help, collaborate, and all kinds of things. Another thing I'd like to mention too is if you enjoy this podcast and you're thinking to yourself, what can I do? to get better at marketing in for my practice or within my job, I actually created a digital marketing planner and you can buy it on Amazon and it ships um, super quick on Amazon. So if you head on over to veterinary marketing or actually veterinary marketing podcast.com forward slash planner, I created a free training that goes along with that as well. And there's a link to the planner in that. So check that out. If you are so inclined to buy a physical planner for your marketing, it helps you to track things. It's super, I think helpful just making things organized, getting all of your assets in one place. And so uh, I use it for my own stuff and I I find it's very helpful. So um, I think this is going to be a big help to you. But let's get into today's episode 187 of the podcast. I'm very excited. Only 13 episodes away from 200. It's going to be cool. But let's talk about some of the most important things that I think are going to really help you in 2020 and beyond. And I think that the first thing that I have seen a lot of, and this is definitely going to be important as time goes on, just because it's getting more and more competitive. 2019 was the first year that uh, digital marketing outspent traditional marketing. And so that's pretty monumental. Um, And traditional marketing is anything that's not online. So billboards, um, traditional TV, um, direct mail, and all all the other stuff outside of things that are on a computer outspent it. And so we're going to have just more and more large size companies jumping into this space. And as more companies jump into this space, it's going to get more competitive. So what does that mean? How do you stand out in a place that is extremely competitive? And I think that the kind of quickest fix to standing out, if you're not satisfied with your cost per action on your digital marketing, if you're not satisfied with the response that you're getting, the way to improve the response is to improve your content and improve your creative and the ad creative quality. And I used to kind of think that only the offer mattered. And it's true that the offer is core in terms of what it is that you have, but your competition is getting better. The attention on the the platform is getting less and less. So you have to stand out. So you need to do better content content quality you need to stand out in terms of your content quality that's out there and i tell you i am just blown away constantly by how much the veterinary industry is improving in their content that they're putting out and so that's very promising um but that means too that you need to be sure and be on you know the quality of high quality content what does that mean what is high quality content and what is high quality creative so I think in general, if you're doing content that is ultra specific and that you're doing content that is ultra helpful, ultra value providing, that is the quality that you're going to need to to put out. So number one, it has to be extremely useful, extremely funny, extremely creative, something along those lines. And I know it's difficult sometimes to say, well, I'm not artistic or creative and I don't think I can put together a high quality video or, you know, all, all of those kind of objections that come up when somebody says you need to make high quality content or you need to make high quality ads and that's okay but figure out how can you be ultra helpful with your content how can you do better and provide more value in what you're putting out 
and not just making things for the sake of making them, but actually make stuff because it's going to have a big, big impact on the clients. So I think that that's, that's super important. So your creative matters. And when I go out and I create ads, and if I don't have creative that really calls out to the audience that we're trying to target or that's just not optimized for what we're doing, if we're just slapping something together, it shows in the cost per action. And we need to have the audience clearly defined. We need to understand the avatar. We need to understand what makes them tick. We need to understand what their main motivations are and how do we tap into those motivations because at the end of the day, you just need to cut through the noise and provide value. And I think that that's very, very important. So improve your creative. And that might just be you know, testing and trying things. If you're improving your content and your creative, you're going to see a better result. And um, so just make incremental improvements. It doesn't have to be going from, you know, something that might just be slapped together, kind of last minute thinking of it. And then your next move to improving your content is actually planning it out or actually understanding the emotional pain points that you're going to be solving for these people or providing a quick win for them or packaging it in a way that makes it look nice and expensive. So just packaging matters and the way that you present offers matter. So make sure you're matching the brand that you want to have. And uh, I think that that really makes a big difference. The other thing that I just can't highlight enough, and I've been talking about this for a few years now, but it just is incredibly important. The cost per action that we're seeing for brands that have established retargeting audiences versus the cost per action for people starting from from blank or just putting out offers is tremendous. And what, what do I mean by that? Your retargeting lists make a huge, huge impact on advertising that you're doing. So if you want to be figuring out ways to drive people into your practice, you need to have them engaging with the content and the high quality content that I just was referencing. But you also need to have your retargeting pixels installed on your site. And you need to understand which pockets of audiences are going to be the best performers for you. Because if you're not familiar with your retargeting lists and your ads and things that you're doing, if all of a sudden, let's say it starts to slow down, which I think that we're going to start experiencing slowdowns pretty soon here, um, I, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball or anything, but just, we've had tremendous growth for the past like long season. And so it's, it's going to come to a slowdown at some point. It just typically does right with, with market cycles and things, but having these different pockets of retargeting lists that you can go and tap into and create ads for that, you know, are going to be high performers so that you can collect that low hanging fruit as quickly and as easily as possible it's really, really valuable to know. So make sure that you're testing against these audiences. Do small little ad spends and you don't have to do like, you know, $100 ad spend per day. Just do a dollar or $5 per day and see which little pockets are working the best, which ones are performing best for you so that you can actively um, go and make ads and offers for these different groups of people. So let's talk about retargeting lists that you should have. Segments that I think are super important for both Facebook and Instagram are Facebook and interaction audiences. So you can go through and create those retargeting lists of people that have interacted with your Facebook page, any pieces of content that you've put out. You can do specific videos. Now, typically veterinary practices don't have big enough audiences in those watch lists to actually make sense to use that. So I typically like to default if it's less than say 20,000 people, which sounds big, but for Facebook audiences, that's pretty small. If it's something less than 20,000 people for a retargeting audience, I like to just lump all of those people together and then give Facebook the opportunity to optimize for a standard conversion pixel. And that might sound really complicated, but what you're doing is you're telling Facebook, here's the group of people that I want to show. And then when we create the ad, we're going to choose what we're optimizing for. And there's what are called standard conversion events. Facebook is tracking all kinds of data on every single user when they go to websites. Uh, It's just mind blowing how much data they have. And so they know which people in that audience are most likely to book an appointment. They know which people are most likely to fill out a web form. And so let Facebook use its amazing algorithm to optimize for those conversion events and don't just drive clicks, but actually try to optimize for complete registration or a lead or a purchase or an appointment or a donation. There's all these cool standard conversion events that you can be optimizing for. So retargeting lists on Facebook natively 
I like to also separate it in between Facebook as well as Instagram. Because if you have these two different audiences, you need to be creating ad creative for each platform because it's very different. Then I like to have website graphic. And um, if you have a large website, um, if you have a large amount of website traffic, then you're going to want to um, maybe even narrow it down from there where they have top 25% of traffic. I don't think I like to go any more narrow than top 25% of traffic because Facebook's ads just need a big enough audience to actually um, you know, have enough people to do something effective with. So those are the three main retargeting lists that you need to pull from Facebook. And then on top of that, which leads me to point number three, is that you need to be building your email list. Not enough practices are doing email. That This is huge. You need to be doing email. So when I say you need to be doing email, what do you need? You need to have a way to send emails automatically without manually emailing people. If you don't have something set up right now, MailChimp is fine. Next, you need to have, um, just on top of that, you need to have, I think, a few sequences in place. You should have a newsletter sequence that gets sent out at least once a month. You need to have a welcome sequence that helps to basically explain what the culture of your practice is, why you're here, why it's important that they need to open the emails, and what it is that you're going to provide for them. So it's setting up the expectations for emails. And then I think that it's great to have just segmented series as well that you can build out one at a time. And as you build these, they're going to be very valuable assets for yourself. So like, let's say you have a lead magnet for puppies that you're going to be using to generate opt-ins for puppies, right? So maybe a puppy care package opt-in lead magnet that you're driving traffic to, you want puppy owners to open, and it provides a lot of value for them. So that's one great product that you can have to, to market. And then maybe a kitten one. And then maybe a heartworm one or a seasonal thing or a promotional one about dentistry or you know whatever it is that you're wanting to increase in, in your practice, building out those sequences so that they're built out and done. And as you get those done, they're now assets that you can use forever because you know, the information with regard to puppies and kittens doesn't really change over time. So having these assets that you can use and reuse over time and cycle through, really, really valuable. But most practices aren't doing it properly. Most practices aren't writing content. And just a few quick notes. When you're doing email, keep it simple. Don't talk about you, talk about them. And then always have one call to action inside the email. I can't tell you how many times I've seen email newsletters from practices that just have a bunch of info with nothing like, hey, maybe you want to schedule an appointment. Here's how you do that. So make sure you have one call to action. And then also make sure that all of your phone numbers and your maps and everything is mobile optimized. So that if somebody's on their phone, which typically is how people read email these days, if they click the button that says your address, it opens Google Map directions. So they don't have to do extra work. They can actually search for your uh, address and then go to the practice. So just a few little notes there. The fourth thing, which is kind of like email, but it's just different because it's a different medium, it's text message marketing. I think text message marketing is just getting more and more important just because people, especially with Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, they're going to be doing what are called intermodal messaging. It means that there's only going to be one app. You don't have to switch between apps to message with your friends and things. Facebook has said that they're going to be doing big pushes into this. This is going to be a huge product focus for them. And I think it's going to be a game changer. If you can send out text messages with ManyChat or with Twilio, you're going to get huge responses um, because you're going to have people that are an active and captive audience. It's going to also help help you to stand out from everybody else. So you have phone numbers for your clients. Make sure you're distinguishing if it's a landline or a cell phone, which I'm sure most of your clients only give cell phones now. But then ask if they would like to get any promotional updates via text message as well. And so that way you can use a tool like Twilio, for example, which is a great text mess broad- text message broadcasting platform for people that have opted in and asked for this kind of content. If you want to see good examples of text message marketing, if you look at Gary Vaynerchuk, for example, um, he does it like crazy. I get like, I would say four or five text messages from Gary per week. And he's the only person doing that right now. So it's, you know, aside from family members and friends who text me, he's the only one that's in my text message inbox 
And I'm sure he's getting a tremendous amount of traffic and attention because he's out there doing this and nobody else is. He's actually texting for content and reminders and just all kinds of really, really cool things. So Gary Vaynerchuk is a good person to look at for text message marketing. And then the last thing that I think is going to help you in 2020 and beyond is really having segmented funnels that you can use to drive people into your practice. So bottom of funnel type activities that you're driving people in for that are segmented and specific. And this is going to help you to stand out from everybody else. But if you're building out funnels that are related to dentistry and info that people need to know around dentistry, um, uh, you know, different kinds of treatments, pain management treatments, um, just all kinds of things. You know your practice and your profession better than I ever could because you are a practitioner of it. So, you know, if I said to you, what are like three things that you wish you could help to tell clients or train clients and build out funnels? And when I say funnels, that means it needs to have a way for somebody to opt in and request information. And then it needs to have a follow-up process that leads them to becoming a client in your practice. So typically when we start that, we think about the end in mind. So like we say, okay, we're going to drive dentals into the practice. So what does that look like? And then we reverse engineer all of the steps there and really break it down in its simplest form so that we can get somebody from being a stranger to a client. And the funnel is the bridge that helps to get them there. So you probably heard funnels a lot. Um, it's becoming more popular in the veterinary industry, which is I'm so excited about, but it's, I think, just important to consider these valuable assets for your practice. And if I owned a practice and I owned a veterinary practice, what I would do is build out, I would say, five funnels that I tested and ran traffic to and that I was able to basically turn on and off kind of like a, a water faucet where I could, if I wanted more clients, okay, turn on, turn on this funnel, get more dentals, okay? We ran that for a month we're starting to get ad fatigue. Okay, let's turn on our senior pet and pain management one. Okay, that went great. Let's do our puppy one. Okay, and then, you know, moving on month after month with content cycles that matched these funnel builds as well. And especially as I think the market is going to probably, especially after this election, it's probably going to get a little bit tighter in terms of economic growth. I think that it would be wise to have all of this stuff figured out before the rainy day comes where you say, oh, geez, we haven't been busy in a month now. What the heck should we do? If you're being proactive and you're being you know, responsible and building out all of these tools, it's just going to help you. Even if that rainy day doesn't come, it's still going to be better for you. You're going to be set up and understand and have control. I'll tell you a quick story is that when, when I started doing digital marketing, the reason why I got into it was because I wanted to be a real estate investor. It sounds weird, but the real estate market crashed and I was left with no options. And I thought like, oh, I never imagined this was going to happen. What the heck should I do now? Because it wasn't an option. And it was too late at that point to be proactive and think. And so then I said to myself, I think the internet is an amazing tool that we can use to drive attention and traffic. If I can figure out how to drive people men take attention and turn it into sales, then I'm going to be kind of the master of my own fate, so to speak. And it said, I need to learn how to do this so that I can control my own fate. The same thing goes for you. If you can figure out how to take attention from online, whether it's through social media, whether it's through paid ads, whether it's through email marketing, whatever the, the tool or the medium that you use, if you take that attention and you drive people into your practice, you're going to be so much more successful than if you hadn't started. So if you're thinking, I really need to do some things, if you've been thinking, oh, you know what, I need to update my website or I need to update my email or, you know, I'm sure you have a list of things that you've been putting off. I have those lists too. Just start with one thing. One thing at a time makes a big difference. And so get started today though. I hope that you um, join me in the Facebook group, The Veterinary Marketing Nerds. If you ever have any questions, have any comments, or you need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I hope that 2020 is the best year you've had so far, and uh, I'm really, really excited for all the stuff to come. So thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe in iTunes, Google Play, wherever you get your podcast from, and we'll talk soon. All right, bye, everybody.